Yo, welcome back. Uh, welcome to uh, welcome back, of course, to the the point of view. Well, to give some context to the program, the discussions uh, we're having in this edition, we'll take you to the circuit court, one of the circuit courts in Accra, where uh, today, Wednesday, um, Aisha won and her accomplices, three of them, were actually taken to court. And um, her lawyer, Nkrabi Fadate, uh, made a case for, for, for a bail application, essentially made a bail application to the court, asking the court to... Um, release Aisha Wan on bail, but um, his arguments were not accepted by the court. So we have uh, a wrap, or we have the story or the full story from the court. Let's get you up to speed with what, it, what, what transpired in the court today, which culminated in the uh, remand that um, she was actually put on. So we'll bring you um, those excerpts, and after that, we will discuss the matters with our guests. They proceeded to the circuit court for them to uh, have their case submitted and heard. Today's case is to focus on um, bail acquisition. And my colleague Hansen Ajiman was on the ground and has been following the proceedings. All of them um, are being charged with counts of engaging in mining without permit, represented by former member of parliament for Brickham, Captain Retard uh, in Krabia. If I, that uh, these persons are yet to come out of the courtroom, uh, some of the court officials currently filing out of the courtroom. Um, that is uh, Captain uh, Nkrabia If I, that uh, we are yet to see the accused persons. Uh, police officers soon should be expected to escort um, Aisha One and three other Chinese persons who have been arrested. It's been an interesting uh, moment in court today as Captain Nkravia Fadate made the argument as to why his clients should be granted a uh, bill. Um, Aisha Wan and um, the various the other accused persons in this particular case are being taken out of the court premises here at the circuit court uh, back to the police custody uh, where they are supposed to be until the case is recalled or the next sitting date. So I respect my Lord for the decision he has given. I accept it. But I will go to chambers and myself and my colleague lawyers will decide the way forward. What happened was that I was defending Aisha 1 at High Court Criminal 1. Then, on the day that we were supposed to open our defense, the Attorney General entered nolly prosecai, which means don't prosecute. Then the Attorney General took my client away from the court. The next thing I heard the next day was that my client had been flown out of Ghana, back to China or wherever, but out of Ghana. I didn't understand why the Attorney General did not allow us to finish the case. I think it was a wrong move, but they took her out of Ghana. Today we are being told in the court that she sneaked out of Ghana, which is false, a blatant untruth, an inaccurate statement. I was not at the bar conference, but I'm told that the Attorney General says, the cooperation of the judiciary is required to keep these people in custody. If it is true that my learned friend, the Attorney General, made such a statement, then it is most unfortunate, most unfortunate. And uh, in the light of that, the decision to refuse bail gives credence to what is being said which is unfortunate, most unfortunate. Counsel, you pretty much relied on some of the engagements that have gone on within the media space. How do you reconcile the information minister's revelation that she was repatriated to the, the statement from prosecutors today that she sneaked out of the country? My worry is that the media has overhyped this small matter of mining without license and doing mineral sales without license. 
It's a small matter. It happens every day in Ghana. You're welcome back. So that's my colleague uh, Sixtus Dongolo and Michael Obodu. Earlier I heard Hansen Ajeman. And that's essentially, essentially what uh, went down in court uh, with the judge indicating that he upholds the prosecution's case and I shall want it's been kept uh, in remand. Well, I've been joined in studio by the ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament, uh, member of Parliament for North Tongue, the Honorable Samuel Kujotablaka. Welcome. Hi, right, thank you, Duke. How are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm well, by his grace. Good, good, good to have you. Good to see you too. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, with the how this issue has, has really, really unfolded, one would have thought that would look to us having the justice system do its work and see how it will end. I mean, getting the, getting the assurance this time around from the Attorney General that we'll have nothing like a nolly prosecutor. But you, at least if from what you've said and what you've put out there in the public, you want some sort of a retrospective look into this matter, probably a probe. What essentially would a probe do that the kind process that has been set in motion will not do? Well, let me say a good evening to you, to the team here, and to all distinguished viewers across the globe. All of us Ghanaians are deeply worried about the turn of events. This Aisha Juan matter has really exposed the lack of confidence, the lack of trust that we must as a people be worried about in our state institutions. Okay. The entire national security apparatus stands exposed in the most terrible of ways. One woman Aisha Huan, like knife true butter, hot knife true butter, has virtually rendered the entire national security architecture of our country worthless, useless, rudderless, leaderless, <coughs> clueless. And one wonders, are we safe as a country? It is the reason we in the NDC caucus in parliament are of the firm conviction that the only way to get to the bottom of this mystery and really understand what is going on and what has gone on over the years and to know who are her collaborators mm. because Aisha Wan could not have mesmerized the entire system, held all of us to ransom all these years if she didn't have big wigs, collaborators, co-conspirators who are in high places, it would not have been possible. Mm. I mean, see what is unfolding before us. Mm. The first time a top government official, senior minister, We've had only two senior ministers in our history. The Venerable J.H. Mensah, God bless his soul. And then the Honorable Osafu Mafu. The Honorable Osafu Mafu told us, in very clear language, that Aisha Juan and that the Chinese were about to give us $2 billion. We are about to sign a Sino-Hydro deal. They are going to help us with the, uh, uh, the, 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 the whole uh, plans for our bauxite and, and all of that. He spoke at length about how having Aisha Huan in jail mm -hmm. would not be in our collective mm -hmm. interest and that we should rather look at our economic gains with our bilateral relations with China. There was an uproar. We, we, most of us disagreed with him because it's not just about one person. And it was not a matter of either or. Okay. 
we could have ensured that Aisha Juan was prosecuted and jailed and we could still we would even have garnered more respect in the eyes of the Chinese so that even in the bauxite exploration they would know that they must be fair they must follow our rules and we are not up for another round of colonialism mm, okay. another round of exploitation as the Tanzanians have done mm. the Tanzanians in 2019 February 2019 successfully prosecuted and jailed their version of Aisha Huan mm. known as Yang Fenlang mm. the Ivory Queen yeah. who was poaching elephants and uh, uh, stealing their tasks and uh, smuggling it all over the place she is doing jail time of 15 years. But I think the, the government, I mean, if what the president said in Canada is anything to go by, he indicated that essentially that was a faux pas, it was some sort of a mistake. So if really, not so many words, you would say that probably that chapter has been closed. And this is another opportunity for government to right the wrong that was done to the Ghanaian public in 2018 when this whole issue, issue came up. So you see we could have made room mm. for some concession okay. that the chapter is closed if the story aligns okay if it was a consistent story, story. so senior minister Safu Mafu says if, uh, uh, deportation yeah. then the president also says deportation when he spoke in september mm. 2019 at Princeton mm. and that it was a mistake but the president put out a bombshell mm. only a couple of days ago substantially changing his position when he said that he's no longer sure if it was a deportation or in his own words if Aisha Huan fled mm -hmm. the jurisdiction yeah. and that he is uncertain now this is the commander-in-chief, the chair of the National Security Council. When the president said that, information minister, John Abu Kojo Ponkroma, in a clear, you know, Gobelian strategy, set out to tell us that we were not really um, listening to the president attentively. It was some figure of speech mm. and that um, the president uh, was referring to repatriation. Mm. He introduced a new angle repatriation and that Aisha Wan was repatriated mm. then, but, but if then, you look at the two then are, mm -hmm. are they not different deportation repatriation or just to be just a matter of semantics I mean, well not really uh, deportation can be to anywhere where, yeah. but repatriation must be to your home, home country. country and repatriation requires some normally in diplomatic circles yeah. requires some agreement, agreement. You know, so there has to be some bilateral agreement. You have to also work for the consent mm. of the person you are repatriating. And then there is so, extradition. Yes. Which one you are taking back to go and be tried in your country. Exactly. So they are not exactly the same. And if you look at our Immigration Act of 2000, Act 573, mm. there is only provision for deportation. Okay. We don't have in our immigration laws repatriation. And section 35 and 36 is very clear yeah. there are two grounds upon which you deport either through a court order or through a ministerial uh, order by the minister of of the interior, interior and he must proceed on the basis of an executive instrument mm. none of that was done since 2018 mm. and so even the claim of deportation it's, it's clear to us that it didn't seem to have followed the legal processes okay. now you have a situation where you have all of these conflicting accounts today in court we read a totally new development which suggests that aisha juan sneaked out of the jurisdiction that's what the prosecution is saying yeah. that aisha juan sneaked out when you listen to Aisha Huan's lawyer, the Honorable C Captain Krabi Efadete, mm -hmm. stalwart of the MPP, former Deputy Minister uh, for the Interior, mm -hmm. he also disagrees uh, with, with, with the accounts mm -hmm. of, of, the, of the prosecution. Now, it's clear that we 
have not been told the truth okay. and that there are too many inconsistencies. inconsistencies and distortions. And you see, I did my own checks. I remember I first put out yes, that, on Monday. that this whole claim of deportation, deportation is quite dubious because my checks indicate that the basic protocols were not followed. Not only was our immigration so, law so in, not in this not, instance, not what followed. would be the basic protocols that you so that not so followed. for a high profile suspect mm -hmm. like Aisha Huan, who is a kingpin, the leader of a cabal, mm. a cartel, who you were prosecuting initially until you filed your nolly prosecutor, this woman should have been escorted. Mm. She was not escorted. My checks also indicate that the receiving country, the Chinese authorities, were informed about this whole so-called deportation mm. two days after the deportation, when she had vanished into thin air. Then my checks also indicate that Aisha Huan was not physically handed over. Look, as ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, we have been part of receiving delegations mm -hmm. of deported Ghanaians. Yeah. Yeah. And we see how they arrive, escorted. There are times that we have even raised concern about their human rights. Yeah. Remember the, Sometimes, the, yes. German, uh, the yes. U.S. one? The, the U.S. one, yes, chains. when they came yeah. in, in chains. They said they asked for water, they were not given. They asked for food, they were ignored. And throughout the journey, you know, their escorts manhandled them. Mm. And they were really upset. And we even protested. I remember meeting at the time Ambassador Jackson raising some concerns. You know? So how is it that this is how our nationals are deported? These are the standard protocols, protocols. which we know about. But okay. in the case of Aisha Wan, this was not followed. Okay. And we know that. Uh, uh, and and, and, and okay. we know that. This yes, is very important. We know that there is no direct flight from Accra, Accra to Guangzhou or to Beijing. Mm. You must transit. If we are told the government is saying uh, they, they, they put her on Ethiopian Airlines, so she must necessarily transit in Addis Ababa, in Addis Ababa for at least two and a half hours. Mm. Anybody who wants to abscond, who wants to run away, has enough time to Plot. disappear right. in, in, in Addis Ababa. So, okay. I, I mean, there, there was really no commitment from the get-go. I mean, this whole claim of a, of, of a deportation appears to me to just be a charade. All right. We will we'll, we'll, we'll take a break. When I come back, we'll, we'll find out what form, of, what form should this probe take? Who should be involved in the probe? Then there are even questions about if the minority has that right to raise these questions, especially when Aishawan was arrested on more than one occasion um, in, in, in the NDC era when they, when they were in office. Well, we have, of course, we'll, we'll take your comments as well and then all the questions we want you know, to answer. We'll be back after the break. Stay with us. Make I walk you through my everyday life. Busy, busy, busy from the morning light. My to do list long, shadow fits to overlap. So sharp, sharp, turn on mobile app. School fees check, light bills check. Do I'm with speed like a G4 jet? You be at the day, I am not upset. Check, I don't even use text to the check. Join the Absa family and make fast, easy, and safe transactions with our digital products. Log on to absa.com.gh. No long thing. We like them simple and easy. Believe me, Believe. no long things in my life. No go. Like I'm simple and easy. Easy. Dad, including mocha, Kaba has five flavors: banana, strawberry, chocolate, coconut. What's the fifth one? Banana. Banana? Okay, Dad. Including mocha, Cabo has five flavors. Banana, strawberry, choco malt, and coconut. What is the fifth one? Strawberry. No. <laughs> uh, are you feeling hot? Honey, including mocha. 
Kaba has five flavors. Strawberry, banana, choco malt, coconut. What's the fifth one? Choco malt? Hey! Coconut! Hey! Nutritious and refreshing, Cowbell has a flavor for everyone. They think I don't know. This advert is FDA approved. Yo, welcome back. This is still the point of view. Uh, we have the Honorable Samuel Okujito, a black ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament in studio. It's all about the Ashawan deportation matter. Of course, a fallout from today's court uh, hearing where she was denied bail and she's been taken back into remand with her accomplices. Uh, so we'll, we'll come back in studio, Honorable. Uh, let's look at, you, you, were, you were talking about the basic uh, protocols which you were expected would be followed, but there is no clear, I mean, I mean, paper trail to put it that way, documentation mm. to back the fact that this 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 was done. I mean, if you look at the immigration to go back to 2018, the immigration uh, press release that was issued on her on her repatriation. So this was this is dated 19 December 2018. It says I hear okay signed by the Comptroller General Kwame Estiate. She says you are hereby informed, and this was to yes, to the Ghana Immigration Service, mm -hmm. copy to the Director Legal uh, Research and Monitoring, that you are hereby informed that in accordance with Section 22 of the Immigration Act 2000, Act 573, your permit to remain in Ghana has been revoked. You are to leave Ghana immediately on receipt of the notice. You are directed to stay out of the country until the Comptroller General approves of your future re-entry into Ghana. This is dated 2018. But today, the fact sheet that appeared in court actually indicated that um, in 2017, she sneaked out of the country. Yeah. So that leaves more questions than answers. Probably immigration may have to clarify. Government communications may have to clarify. But the question I'm asking is, of course, we are, we are calling into question various state institutions. Last week, we had the NIA here asking as to how someone whose biometric data was already in the system mm -hmm. when they, they couldn't identify that this was the notorious mm -hmm. Aisha one yeah. allowed her to get an, another non-citizen ID card. We have Immigration has been called to question today. We've spoken about national security. What form should this prove that the minority is calling for take? Don't forget that in addition to the inconsistency there, mm -hmm. you notice from today's case by mm -hmm. the prosecution mm -hmm. that they say that because Aisha Juan left the jurisdiction sneaked mm -hmm. out no, to quote them verbatim mm -hmm. it averted prosecution yeah. so she was not available to be prosecuted what does that say about the original narrative the only prosecutor, the only prosecutor. is it that because she absconded, mm -hmm. escaped, got out of their hands. They couldn't find her. They didn't want the huge embarrassment, the massive backlash that they will suffer. And that is why they put out that narrative mm -hmm. of a knowledge prosecutor. So there are so many questions. Look, this matter is so muddied, it's so murky. I mean, I was saying this evening on another network mm -hmm. that um, the matter is more muddier and murkier mm -hmm. than the destroyed water bodies yeah. that Aisha Juan and her gang have left us with. And let's not forget that in all of this discussion, it's about the existential threat that we face. True. Ghana Water is saying that in the next few years, we may have to import water. water. Confanoche is saying that the kind of kidney cases, the kind of deformities they are seeing in newborns because of these galamse activities, cyanide, and all kinds of chemicals that have seeped into our drinking water sources. So 
this is mass murder. Mm. We should look at it that way. It's, it's a grave matter. It's not the usual political football and all of that. And let's admit, this has been building up mm -hmm. for a long period. Yeah. And what we have lacked is the integrity deficit. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 it's clear that there is a certain integrity deficit. There is a certain lack of political will okay. to confront this matter head on mm. and deal with it. And there are too many state actors, okay. political activists who are neck deep. That is why I come back to your question. Mm. The probe, it is so critical. It's crucial. It's imperative. Mm -hmm. We need a full scale national inquiry into this Aisha Juan affair because there are so many tentacles. Mm. How did she get in here in the first place? Mm. Who led her into Ghana? Mm -hmm. Who helped her to set up her base, her gang in Kumasi? Mm. Who are her collaborators in high places? Mm. How did she leave this jurisdiction? How did she sneak out? Who aided her to sneak out? As the prosecution is now saying. Mm. How did she sneak back in? Are we the safe? Immigration at the time, it's still on approved route because they don't have, they have no records of, of, of someone like entering privately with approved At the time, you know, Duke, you mm. are always in parliament with us. You have seen the billions we have approved over the years mm. for enhanced national security yeah. because all our neighbors have been attacked. Terrorists have descended upon the sub-region and all our neighbors have been attacked. Ghana is the only country standing. And we have all agreed there's a certain bipartisan consensus that we must heavily finance and re-equip our national security apparatus so that the terrorists cannot come in. If, as we have been doing all of this, believing that we have some enhanced security, we call something the Accra Initiative, we are seen as the leading light in safeguarding any, if there's any jurisdiction that the international community thinks that, look, they are so prepared against any terrorist threat. See how Aisha Wan has just messed everything up and reduced everything to rubble. So we must have a full-scale independent inquiry into this matter. And you see, it is the only way that we can identify name and shame. If they say, I mean, some senior journalists mm -hmm. are talking about her blackmailing people, mm -hmm. let us have that probe. Let's listen to her. But, but, if, but if, videos, if this case goes, if the, full, videos, if the case, if go this case goes the full hall in court, is a prosecution and defense. Yes. Cross examination. Will, will, all, will we not have these facts? We, we, may, we can have access to the court records. We can have access to the judgment that may come. They, 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 that may come. That may give us some source material to proceed from. So someone would argue, why don't we wait for this to play out? And then, based on the judgment that we have and the court records, because people testify in court under oath, based on that, we can take up from there and then look at answering the questions that were left unanswered in the course of the trial. No, I... I, I strongly disagree. Mm. Um, I mean, if you even look at the charges so far, I mean, engaging in mining activity Activities without license, license and all. Very, well, which which very, a very, lawyer, by the way, says are trivial issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm. Very, very narrow. Mm. Very, very narrow. It's just one small side mm. of this giant puzzle. We will not get to the bottom of, okay. of issues. And we will allow those who have brought us this international disgrace. Mm. You have no idea. The, the, the commentary coming from outside within diplomatic circles, mm. how they are perceiving Ghana and, and seeing our entire, you know, state institutions, our democracy, the, the, the pillars mm. of our country. How, how one, one immigrant has dribbled the whole system. Dribbled the whole system. So we need this probe. Then we will know these her collaborators. And those who have, you know, combined efforts to bring us to this point mm. of monumental embarrassment. So, relying on the prosecution alone 
will not the prosecution can continue mm. that has a very narrow objective mm. of you know bringing sanctions and dealing with Aisha Juan you know more uh, directly and having her in jail but it will not really expose the entire network that is what a full commission of inquiry so this is under and that article uh, to 278, 278. Uh, it's a full-blown yes. 278 a, a full-blown 278 public inquiry ghana yes. ghana at 50 exactly. type waku commission exactly. type waku of, commission type. type yes you know that's 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 what we need that, that's what we i mean see how this matter has left top government officials now we don't know who to trust but, but there, 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 there may be a if you, there if may you, be if a, you have a mm. situation where the president the commander in chief the chair of the national security council as per Article 83 of our Constitution, mm. says that he's uncertain, he's unsure. He doesn't know who to trust. But uh, the demerit with that may be mm -hmm. that after, the, after such an inquiry, if adverse findings are made against people, mm -hmm. we may not be able to criminally prosecute them. Remember the, 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 the Ghana 50 the, the issue? Ghana 50. The, 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 the um, Rekubrobe case. Yes. The celebrated Rekubrobe case. Yes. Where... After, because of the findings of the Ghana 50 Commission, those who ought to be prosecuted in PNE and co walked away free because of, yeah. because of the downside mm -hmm. of using that, yeah. that vehicle. Well, I, I recall that in that specific matter, Justice Mafusa, mm -hmm. God bless his yeah. soul, clarified that it stemmed from how the CI was drafted. Yes. So we just have to be careful. We must learn lessons. Mm -hmm. We have the benefit of hindsight now based on that judicial pronouncement. So how we draft the CI will guide us. Okay. And you see, we should also have a situation where we can trust the process to the end. Okay. We've also had commissions of inquiry, like the Iowa so West Commission, mm -hmm. where a white paper, paper is issued, and then it really, you know, makes a mess of everything. It, it, it's, it's as if we've just wasted resources, wasted everybody's time. So it, it, it just comes back to the commitment, the integrity. When we say we want to get to the bottom of issues, let's mean it. Let's, let's just be sincere. When we say that, look, we, we are even ready to put our presidency on the, on the line to fight a national cause, let's mean it. And let's go the full hog. Because look, at the end of the day, we can always create loopholes yeah. if we don't have genuine commitment. And, and that's what really is a being as a country mm. what do you say who say that well the minority the ndc really even though this is a national issue we're looking at it from a national point of view is something that you shouldn't really read political meanings into it but it's become a political matter it's been looked at it as we always do sadly in the country that the ndc may not have the moral high ground to put it that way to talk about this aisha one issue because aisha under the Mahamaya was arrested more than once and she was let go. So I come back to the point I've been making all evening. Mm. Genuine, sincere commitment to uprooting this kanka. Mm. We face an existential threat. If there are NDC elements okay. who even are still serving are members of parliament with us and a probe will expose them so that we will be safe we can leave why not when i call for a probe i'm not hoping that only my political opponents will be caught there may even be people who will be caught who are not even political and sometimes that's a mistake we make in this country we think everybody is mpp ndc and sometimes the people who are really damaging this country in the public service, in the civil service, who look the other way, who must, I mean, I don't think the minister of the interior or the, the president is the one who was, you know, chaperoning Aisha one and keeping an eye directly to be sure that she doesn't escape. She doesn't get out of the jurisdiction. There were people. Even if she probably found her way out and came back in. Who were those on duty? duty? You know, so this matter to me goes beyond cheap 
partisan point scoring. That has always been our problem. We must rise above that. If even NDC officials will be caught in the web in, from the past that they were also in cahoots with this woman who has come to destroy our environment, who dare any Ghanaian to go to China and do what Aisha Wan has done to us? I mean, you, you will not survive it. You will not survive it. I mean, China, how draconian they are. I mean, check the human rights reports. Yeah. They are always up there in terms of, I mean, closing the space and descending on people on the slightest of provocation, especially if you are a foreigner. And then here we are. We allow this foreigner to just mess us up and damage our country and, 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 and virtually set in motion triggers that now we are talking about mass murder. Mm -hmm. Our people are dying. I mean, the, the kind of permanent injuries that we are causing to our people. So this is a very, very, very serious matter. It's a grave issue. So we should not care whose ox is God who gets caught up in the web. I'm not going to waste my time trying to defend anybody. Mm. If you've gone to get yourself entangled in this Aisha Wan web, whatever you benefited from it, you didn't come and share it with NDC <laughs> members or you didn't call an MPP Congress <laughs> and shared it with this. It's, our mindset must change. change yeah. the, the, the narrow, cheap, partisan point scoring must end someday mm. and it must end now. Because you have all these criminals, and these days, all they have to do is to get a party card. Yeah. And check all of them. They have multiple party yeah. cards, multiple party t-shirts. Because they know that immediately the matter is politicized. Yes. Then, yeah. Yeah. then they get away with it. No. I mean, and that's why I will expect the president, because as it is now, his entire government is sinking. Mm. And for all you know, he's just a few miscreants, a few unpatriotic Ghanaians who are collapsing his government. Why don't you set up this probe? Let's identify them and let's smoke them out. And as Bob Marley said, let's chase these crazy boys out of town and let's all have some freedom, some peace. Right. Because look, as it is now, now everybody who is a member of the National Security Council stands indicted. And, okay. and, and look at the, 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 the We're allowed to make members. the constitutional point, but we yeah. need to pay the okay. bill. So we'll take a break. When I come That's back, okay. We'll start off on the constitutional point, and then we'll find out, apart from the probe, generally, policy-wise, um, in terms of the regulations and the laws that need to be put, put in place, what we need to do, the pragmatic steps we can take to really deal with this issue of illegal mining. We'll be back after the break. For decades, we have helped businesses connect with their trade partners all over the globe. From Ghana to Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Benin, Togo, Senegal, China, Morocco, France, Netherlands, and many other countries. We have made it possible to bring Ghana to the world. We have brought small and medium businesses closer to their customers across the regions in Ghana with our SME support facilities. We have brought relief and smiles to the faces of families with our employee personal loans. With our cutting-edge technology and digital support, we take the burden of complex thinking off you, making life simple. That is who we are, as close as a partner. Bank of Africa. We are indeed the African bank with the global reach. Hotel presents Fresh Anguamo with all the great delights. Fufu in a flash with Koto, Yemadie, and Akrantie. Almighty Gobe with Koko and Eggs. Ish. Crispy fried chicken with rice, pizzas, and whatever else you're looking for or need to pay for. Hubtel presents. Ghana's most useful app. Hubtel is everything you.
me chose. Ah, pefefe. Ah. Mm. <laughs> Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Cal Choco Toothpaste, healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Kale Chocolate Toothpaste, Sankofa, Yenchi, Kale Chocolate Toothpaste, Happy, Happy Smile. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back. This is still the point of view. We're discussing the matters arising from March and once. Uh, case today, she was in court. She's been reminded. I still have in studio Honorable Samuel Okuche to So we're making the point about those yes, who they, stand indicted, yes. National Security Council. Yes, I mean, we have under Article, under article 83, the National mm -hmm. Security Council says there shall be a National Security Council which shall, be, which, which shall consist of A, the President, B, the Vice President, C, the Ministers, for the time being holding the portfolios of foreign affairs, defense, interior, and finance, and such other ministers as the president may determine. D, the chief of defense staff, and two other members of the armed forces. E, the inspector general of police, and two other members of the police service, one of whom shall be the commissioner of police responsible for criminal investigations department. F, the director general of the prison service. G, the director of external intelligence. H, the director of internal intelligence. I, the director of military intelligence. J, the commissioner of customs, exercise and preventive service. And K, three persons appointed by the president. 832 provides, the president shall preside at meetings of the National Security Council. And in his absence, the vice president shall preside. Look at such an eminent body. Yeah. The, the top president, vice president, cabinet ministers of national security, foreign affairs, defense, interior. You have the CDS, you have the IGP, you have Director of External Intelligence, Research, Internal Intelligence, all of these ghouls, these couples, mm. and see where we are. One wonders, what kind of intelligence do they get? What kind of intelligence are they processing? Do, are they even meeting at all? Mm -hmm. How come they've left the president confused? Why was the president saying something different in 2019? And then now he's saying that he is not sure. The chair of the National Security Council, such an eminent body. So we are really in crisis. We are really in crisis. Apart from this probe you are calling for, uh, really, and, and I agree with you when you make the point that this issue of Galamsey, it's not really a partisan thing. I must at be all. dealt with. At all. I, I, I know since, I mean, our laws have been strengthening. So, I mean, in the, in the, in the previous legal regime, it was only about some fines and errors. Now the the punishment goes up higher. Aisha, Aisha one, when she's convicted, could be going in up to 25 years and, and, and all of that. Let's look at the, the policy, the regulation space, the law, the legal frame, and what we really need to do, because obviously these foreigners come in to do these things, but they cannot do it without, the collab without local collaborators. So holistically, apart from smoking out those who are doing all of these things, what should be the approach to deal with this? Duke, if you'll allow me to be very, very frank, mm. brutally frank with you, I have a radical view Which about is? this matter. Mm -hmm. My position is that these hoodlums, mm. these bandits engaged in Galamse, have declared war on us. The president, the commander in chief, should deploy the Ghana armed forces. We, we should, we should, we should, no, no, you see, no, 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 not, had, not, not tax forces. No, mm. I'm talking about a full military deployment, full blown war, only full blown war. And let us end all mining. There must be a moratorium on all mining activities, including what last scale one done by all the likes mining. of Anglo Gold yes, and the rest. Yes, yes, all yeah. mining, yes. To what end? Because we get, uh, we get money from the so there demands. must be a moratorium. I mean, look. There, I've seen all the reports. Mm. 
there's a third world network every, report. Every now and, now which, and then you ratify yes. these agreements in parliament. The mining leases. I mean, they are all rip off. Look, <laughs> look in, in my view, we should even be talking about nationalizing our mineral right. resources. Yeah. We, we, we should be talking about national, nationalization. What, what, what really are we getting? Go to all the mining yeah. towns and communities and see the level of poverty, the level of deprivation. Yeah. See what, what our people are going through. Go to Obuasi. Go to Mpoho, all those places. Takwa. Takwa. I mean, you weep. So, full-blown war, everybody out, no more mining, and then we come back to basics and see what kind of regime we we'll put in place. Yeah. As it is now, the mining is going on. Many people are complicit. Yeah. Chiefs, politicians, high-ranking personalities in this country. The only way is for everybody to know that, look, there is no mining any longer. So you can't be hiding that. Look, I was following a case recently, mm. Shanji Mines. Mm. You know the number of Ghanaians they have killed? About 26 Ghanaians. Nothing is happening to them. Not absolutely nothing. I think it's in Upper East. It's yes, Upper East. East region. The level of destruction and the millions these people are making, and they are a law unto themselves. You can talk to Dr. Yeni, his yeah. frustrations yeah. with them. Leading MP in the area mm. and lawyer for the families of the deceased. They are massacring our people. And they've gotten away with it. Today, a, a, a pit collapsed and killed five people. Yes. In, in, yes, in, people in, are dying. This region. So, 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 I mean, let us just do a full military deployment. We end it. That's my radical view. Mm. We place a moratorium. Let's give ourselves some years. Because look, the level of destruction, mm -hmm. we, must, we must just accept that. Look, we cannot say that. I, 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 I saw what the lands ministry did. They said they are putting in you know, new regulation. They are training the young people and then mm. to teach them safe mining methods. It hasn't worked. It has not worked. And once people know that mining is going on mm. in Ghana, these things will continue. So this this Shanzi thing confirmed twenty six yes. people dead yes. from yes. your sources. Yes, confirmed, mm. confirmed, and and they are still dying. They are still dying. Some mm. time ago, when Amewu was the the mm. the minister responsible, he issued a statement. I'm asking because we cannot said, we cannot confirm and, and your, said, your figures. No, no, no. I'm, mm. I'm telling you an authority, mm. and I've said that you can talk to Doctor Yeni. Yeah. The, the, the the families of the deceased have engaged him. Mm. They are in court. I, I know what I'm talking yeah. about. And they, and they have no respect for Ghanaian life. The f first deputy speaker, some time back, yeah. suggested this shoot and kill approach, which for me may not be so different from what you're asking for this full blown war ap approach with these guys to, to, to the, to the um, Galamse operated. That didn't really sit quite well with some yes. people. Well, I, I'm not saying that the soldiers should go and kill people. Shoot and kill. You know, just go and get everybody, everybody out. out. Everybody out. And there should be a declaration there is a ban on, on mining. mining all forms of mining all forms of mining okay and then we put our acts together thank you very much for joining us uh, this this evening always a pleasure and to you for also doing the viewing that's our wrap up uh today's edition same time on monday we'll be back here my name is duke menso i sat in for a host keep watching ctv for the very best in programming <laughs>